Welcome back to the Texas Truck Channel, and today we're doing something very, very special. We are at Dinocom in Fort Worth, Texas, and this is Allison. She's going to be our representative today and explain what's happening here. As you can tell, there's a Ford Lightning on the dyno. There's a few things to know. In the past, F-150s were just put in two-wheel drive to be run on the dyno. This is dual motor, and you cannot shut off the second motor. So how are we making that happen today? Right. Well, we've evolved just like the automotive industry has evolved, and uh, we've come up with our own custom gearboxes and okay. gears and drive shaft. Okay. And so these two units, these are actually rollers. So coming into this, when I spoke to you early on, I was like, hey, we're going to do hub dynos. How are we going to do this? And, uh, and Paul has helped explain to me how that's not going to happen at all. We're actually using rollers, and they're mechanically linked. There's actually a drive shaft between the two. And it's really cool. That's pretty proprietary. There's no differentiation that's a problem. There's also individual speed sensors for the front and rear rollers, so we can tell what the power distribution is between the front and rear motor, which is pretty cool. But I really want you to show us the hardware a little bit, and then we'll hop in the truck and do some runs. Okay, absolutely. All right, guys, real quick before we get into the, the meat of the video here, I want to go through a few things. I want to say thank you to Dynocom for making this possible. For those that aren't aware, uh, traditionally, if you were to dyno a full-size truck in the past, you would just run it in two-wheel drive. But the Lightning is different. It's dual motor and it's EV. So not only do we need both motors to run to get the full power rating for it, we also couldn't turn off one if we wanted to. Uh, the system's just not configured that way. It's all-wheel drive all the time. So in order to get that done, it's actually more complicated than anyone thought. Um, you actually need to have a linked all-wheel drive dyno. And a lot of shops have those, but most of them stop at around 125 inch wheelbase. Trust me, I've called every reputable dyno, dyno shop within a thousand miles of our area. Luckily, Dynocom is based in our area and I hit them up and let them know what we're trying to do. And they were very eager to get on board with it. And they actually used their DC 6000 linked dyno and made a, which is actually run off a drive shaft. They're actually shaft linked together, which is really cool. Not belt linked together. Um, that's a big deal because you can't have them running out of sync to get accurate data. And then on top of that, they made a custom adapter to lengthen the wheelbase of it just for this test to get it to 145.5 inches. Um, most of those are designed for all-wheel drive Huracans and Subarus, that kind of thing. So this is a one-off test. And as far as we can tell, or as far as we know, no one outside of Ford has ever dined on the Lightning before. So enjoy this. And thanks again to Dynocon for making this happen. All right, so you mentioned a drive shaft. So it's like a drive shaft, but it's actually a custom shaft that okay. we've done between these two custom gearboxes. So this is the gearbox right here. Correct. Okay. And there's two of them, one on each dyno. So this is actually our 6000 series. So there's uh, this is the eddy current brake inside of this. This okay. is a large electromagnetic frictionless brake. And that helps with applying load, right? Correct. Right. That way, otherwise, so without load, it would just immediately spend 100 miles an hour with, with no resistance. Correct. And so. you can see these are 10.75 inch rollers. So they don't have limited inertia. So in order to actually mimic what's happening on the road. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So a bigger yeah. roller might be a different calibration, obviously. Correct. I okay. know Paul had mentioned because we have also this gearbox for um, multiple other dynos we sell, like the 7500, which is actually a 24-inch roller. Okay. Um, but I knew that this would be fine on here. No, so. this is perfect. And, yeah. And again, before we get to numbers, this thing is rated at 580 and 775, 580 horse, 775 torque. So we're well within the, the range. What's the range on this? What's its peak power? So each dyno is rated for uh, 1,500 plus horsepower, okay. uh, 190 miles per hour. Okay. But, but that is one advantage also of the uh, gearbox linkage versus a belt. So right. typically everyone's used belts. You know, belts slip, belts make a lot of noise, and they, and they can be, power. You can get a speed differentiation between the two, right? Exactly. Okay. Much easier problem. installation. Yeah, we're the first company in the world to really manufacture this and, uh, and produce it. Okay. And that's pretty cool because it's actually really hard to... Dino, dyno and EVs is a completely different game. If you grew up with, you know, pony cars back in the day, it was a little simpler, right? It was two wheels running and it was a direct drive usually. Uh, there's usually a one to one gear ratio. And here we've discovered that this is a two to one gear ratio um, from the motor to the wheels. And that's pretty normal for EVs, but that's some stuff that's not known yet. So that's pretty cool. Um, and that's where that shaft drive is really important because it keeps these things locked together on their readings. And we've actually been involved in the EV market. Uh, we were t we sold the first uh, dyno to Tesla back in 2010, I believe it was. Okay. So yeah, we've been involved with the EVs for a long, long time. And that's exactly why we came here. It just lucked out that you were in fourth as well. This is awesome. So I say we get the rollers going and get some numbers out of this thing. Anything else you want to mention about the equipment um, um, in particular? 
uh, everything's manufactured in the U.S. and okay. everything ships from uh, Fort Worth, Texas. So that's awesome. And y'all sell y'all sell internationally, correct? We do. We sell all over the world. Okay, awesome. Let's get on the rollers, and we'll conclude afterwards. Talk about the numbers. It didn't like that. No, you did something wrong. It's 300 horsepower now. Well, it, it also ran slower. Oh, well, see? There we go. On. Okay. That's good. It, it's fighting me. So it doesn't like sport mode. And. It's fighting again. It's good, right? I'm waiting off because it's not happy. Now we're having we're having some issues with sport mode. It's actually triggering a, uh, a brake sensor warning. So we're actually been running these normal, and we'll get to numbers in a minute, but they, they're right where they should be. We're gonna make sure calibration's correct, and then we'll carry on. So we've run it, let's talk numbers, and I wanna talk the differences between EV and, and ICE motors. So let's get into that. So our peak numbers, um, we're looking at, we did, these are our two favorite runs. We've, we ran it about 10 or 15 times, did a lot of calibrating. And I'll just say right now, something I've learned today is that EVs are completely different from ICE motors and the way that they're measured, it just, the results are different. So we were actually running into a situation where um, without enough load on the dyno, the truck thought all four wheels were off the ground and it was cutting power. Even though stability and traction control were off, it goes to show they're never actually off unless you pull an ABS sensor, which we did not do here today. So we increase road force. What's that called? What's that system called? Virtual road simulation, VRS. VRS, so virtual road simulation, which makes the vehicle, it calibrates based off weight of vehicle and it simulates drag using the eddy brakes. Is that right? Correct. Okay, and so the truck thought then it was tricked. It thought it was on a rolling road, thought it was on a real road. And so it felt very natural compared to how the truck drives on the highway. Made a huge difference. So our numbers got consistent. Initially, we were having this spike on throttle. The vehicle thought it had a wheel spin and it would drop at 70 miles an hour. It would cut power to almost 200 horsepower and then fade back in. It was really bizarre. Um, so we solved that. And something I can tell right away, we don't have, uh, just like on the street, we can't go full throttle. It'll have wheel spin. So we had to roll into it to keep the truck from jumping off the rollers. So about 25 miles an hour, we faded in to full throttle by 30 or 35. So that's what this taper is right here. And then our peak numbers, um, let's see here. We were seven, I'm sorry, 564.9 and 583.5. And our next closest number, our next happy run with calibration was 559.9 and 583.5 again. So it goes to show you that EV is so consistent. Heat soak just isn't happening here. Uh, if you've ever dealt with superchargers and turbos, you know exactly what that means. So. 
Is there anything that you see that's different? This is obviously your world. So what does EV, compared to an ice motor, what do you see in here? I like how this is 559.9. So I'm just calling that 560. Yeah, we'll call it 560. <laughs> we'll be, yeah, we'll be fair. So 560 and we'll right. call this 565. Exactly. Um, just so you know, this truck is rated at 580 and 775. That's what Ford calls it. So a little bit of loss to the wheel makes perfect sense. Absolutely. Um, our torque numbers, they're actually reading higher uh, than what Ford's rating at. And then our horsepower is down a little bit. That, that explains, you do have some drivetrain loss. Uh, unlike the gas version of this truck, there's no transfer case, there's no drive shaft, there's just motor and then half shafts with CV joints on either end. So it makes a lot of sense. Awesome. All right, well, thank you so much for Excellent. coming in clutch and making this thing work. Um, just so you guys know, no one on the planet has dynoed this outside of Ford yet. It's a pretty big deal, and Dino Jet was able to pull it through for us. It's awesome. So thanks for watching. Let us know if you have any questions, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. See you next time.